Welcome. My name is Matt Sharp. I'm an energy consultant with Efficiency Vermont. Today I am providing this presentation about heat pump water heaters. I am not suggesting that this technology is the best option for everyone in every building or to pr promote one brand or type of system over another. Uh, hopefully you learn a little bit of something about heat pump water heaters and can start incorporating them into your business. First of all, a little bit about Efficiency Vermont. Founded in 2000, created by the Vermont legislature in an effort to provide equitable efficiency services across the state. It is regulated like a utility and is operated by Vermont Energy Investment Corporation uh, under an appointment of the Public Service Board. Since 2000, the savings have been growing. This is information that is verified by the Public Service Department and the results of Efficiency Vermont's efforts our investment in energy leads to a, about a two to one ratio as far as savings per dollar spent. This helps Vermonters keep their electric bills lower in a variety of ways and efforts really have reached a large majority of Vermonters. So today we'll talk about heat pump water heaters. Uh, there'll be a little bit of an introduction to heat pump water heaters, considerations for their installation, what some of the benefits are to installing them, and some things that are really important that customers are aware of. An overview of the heat pump cycle can be seen in this diagram. And this, and I'll explain a little bit about a heat pump and how it works uh, so that you have that background. There is a heat source in the case of a heat pump water heater, that's the air around that water heater. In other types of heat pumps, it could be groundwater or a buried ground loop. The tubes that you see pictured here have a refrigerant in them and that refrigerant is cycled through in the direction that these arrows point. The main component of a heat pump is the compressor and, and this unit will uh, compress the refrigerant and enable its temperature to increase by putting it under a high pressure. <clears throat> so the way this works, simply speaking, there's a uh, refrigerant in here that um, goes between a liquid and a vapor, depending on the temperature at which it is operating. And so at the top left here, um, the light blue is a warm vapor. And that warm vapor is pumped into the compressor. And when a vapor is compressed, and put under a high pressure, the temperature increases. And that increased temperature vapor is then circulated through the condenser, which exchanges the heat from that refrigerant into the heat sink. And as the temperature is uh, reduced by the heat exchange, the hot vapor condenses and turns into a warm liquid. And just that phase change alone releases energy into the heat sink. When we get back to the expansion valve, that, uh, that warm liquid is then allowed to expand, reducing its pressure and reducing its temperature into a cold liquid. That cold liquid is then pumped through the evaporator where it will uh, evaporate into a vapor, 
using the heat from the air source and then the cycle continues pumping energy into the heat sink if we flip this diagram uh, 90 degrees and put a heat sink at the bottom that looks like a storage tank of water you can kind of get an idea as to how a heat pump water heater works the heat pump components sit on top of the water heater the air blows through the top of the water heater and um, the heat sink the the storage tank of the water heater is heated by the heat exchange of the heat pump <clears throat> the result of a heat pump cycle is a very efficient use of electricity to provide heating with one kilowatt hours electricity going into the heat pump system and a heat source such as air or ground or water, the heat pump can turn that one kilowatt hours of electricity into three kilowatt hours of stored energy, useful energy. A heat pump water heater example here, it, this is an air to water heat pump because the air is the source and the water is the heat sink. Typical water heaters that are being installed right now are what's called hybrid heat pump water heaters, which means basically there is an electric element that provides supplemental heat when the heat pump cannot keep up with the demand that the water heater is being asked to provide. How much that electric resistance element is used um, will impact the efficiency of the overall efficiency of the water heater and thus the operational costs. In general, you can expect around a third to a half of the electricity compared to a standard electric water heater. That's 50 to 66% savings. So some considerations, one of the biggest ones is the location that it's in. There must be airflow adequate enough so that the heat pump can operate effectively. What this translates to is a room size of at least 700 cubic feet. That's a 10 by 10 room with seven foot ceilings without having to make uh, alterations or provide some additional air supply. The other piece to keep in mind is to be very careful with the proximity to walls and make sure to follow the clearances that are in the manufacturer's literature. You can't restrict the airflow on the air inlet or the outlet. So you can't be too close to a ceiling and you can't be too close to a wall where that air is blowing out through the heat pump. The temperature of the space ideally is 50 degrees or higher. If you get into a space a little lower than that, then the system might be operating in electric resistance mode a little more often. Typical basements make for good locations in general. And if there is a basement that is extremely cold and drafty, a good match for uh, making a, a heat pump water heater work well in that space is to do a weatherization project on that basement so that it's not running below 45, 50 degrees. <clears throat> Infrastructure is very similar or the same as an electric water heater, a typical 30 amp breaker. Um, so when you're swapping out electric water heater for heat pump water heater, it's a pretty simple install. When you're fuel switching, definitely get into a higher cost situation where you'll need to um, pull new wire to a suitable panel. Hopefully the panel doesn't need to be upgraded. Um, and then there's also the issue of decommissioning the old system, which is either capping the lines of an other fuel or 
in the case of an indirect tank, uh, you would have to decommission the the water the boiler side of that water heating system. There is also a condensate drain that's needed for these water heaters. So condensate is a byproduct of its operation, and that can be drained into a floor drain or ideally a plumbing drain. And um, if oftentimes a condensate pump is needed to to pump the condensate up to where that that plumbing drain might be. Sizing is not the same as just replacing a 40 gallon tank with a 40 gallon tank. Um, it's important to optimize the efficiency of a hybrid heat pump water heater uh, to size the storage volume to meet the household's demand. Large volumes of hot water draw in a short time will likely require that electric resistance to be used if the tank is too small. Uh, so furthermore, airing on the larger size will optimize the efficiency of the heat pump water heater so it can run in heat pump mode more often and have uh, optimal operation. There are some options if your um, location needs to be in a small room or a closet. It's possible that louver doors could provide enough airflow to allow a heat pump water heater to operate properly. Just keep in mind that noise is an issue as well and that louver doors would transfer that noise into the space uh, as well. So um, may or may not be a good solution for your application. There are duct kits that can be used. The, the duct kits pictured here, uh, just one example of one manufacturer's method of addressing the airflow issue. There is also um, a split system. This product here is a sand-in unit and um, there are multiple benefits to this. One is the airflow uh, isn't an issue and you can put the storage tank in a confined space and the the uh, outdoor unit uses the air around it on the outside so that um, you don't have to get that air from a closet space. The other benefit is that outdoor unit is where the noise is made. And so that noise you also bring outside. And the other piece is that there is an energy penalty for taking air from the inside of the building and using it to heat hot water. The, hot, the uh, heat pump hot water heaters will cool the area where the heat pump is located. But if you use a split system like this, using outside air, that there wouldn't be a space heating penalty on these types of systems. Water heating is a large portion of household energy use. It even it becomes even higher when efforts are made in the other areas to become more efficient. When you're weatherizing your building or building a very low load home, a high performance home, then water heating becomes one of the largest, if not the largest energy use in the building. <clears throat> so addressing hot water is uh, sometimes the best thing to do for a customer. The energy savings are a large benefit to the customer. That's a, a, one of the largest reasons why a customer might decide to, to purchase and have installed a heat pump water heater. There are some also some dehumidification benefits where it might reduce the need to run dehumidifiers in that area where the heat pump water heater is located. It might not completely remove the need to run the dehumidifiers, um, but it might, and it would certainly reduce it. And in the summertime, these will cool the space as well. It's, it's not a desired piece of wintertime domestic hot water use to cool your space, but in the summertime, it is. 
there's a good warranty. Many of these water heaters offer up to a 10 year warranty on their product, which gives customers um, peace of mind when uh, installing a new technology. And now's a great time to do it. Efficiency Vermont has very attractive rebates to help lower the cost of installing one of these for a customer. There are contractor benefits as well. That warranty is one of them. You can add value to your services by making clients aware of the opportunity to save energy and money by installing a, a heat pump water heater. It's a tends to be a higher margin product. So if you can convince them or if they want a heat pump water heater and you can install that instead of a electric resistance water heater, you could see a higher profit margin. And we try to make the rebate process very simple for contractors. There are no forms. It is an instant rebate at the distributor at the time of purchase. And this also, this work with distributors have, has also enabled them to start having all these units in stock. So they are readily available when you need them. <clears throat> Some things that are very important for customers to be uh, become aware of as they try to make this decision. Heat pump water heaters does they do impact the space they're located in. They run more often than standard water heaters for one. And some of the the side effects of running a heat pump water heater is the noise that they create which sounds like a dehumidifier, but if, too, if located too close to a bedroom or a place that the client wants to have be quiet, um, it could become a nuisance. And they also cool the space a fair amount, a noticeable amount when running. There is a space heat penalty to this um, where they will cool the space and steal a little bit of heat away from the um, the house in the winter time when it's trying to keep occupants comfortable. A couple bullet points about managing the customer expectations. There have been several instances where customers will call contractors or call Efficiency Vermont asking if they have received the rebate. Uh, so try to get in front of that and help them understand that the rebate was applied by putting a line item of the rebate amount as a discount on your invoice. This could save a lot of calls and a few headaches. The other piece that homeowners really need to understand is that there is some maintenance involved with these. The filters must be cleaned monthly, maybe bi-monthly, but they can't just be left alone and never attended to. Make sure clients are aware of these things, and, and I think it'll make their experience much better, and, and thus yours as well. So that's just a little bit about heat pump water heaters. This is a quick overview. Um, hopefully this has been beneficial, and thank you for attending. <laughs>